about the request to extend martial law in Mindanao. Let's listen in. As martial law, administrating, as martial law administrator, stating that based on current security assessments made by the Chief of Staff, Armed Forces of the Philippines recommending the extension of martial law for another 12 months or one year beginning 1st of January 2018 until 31 December, covering the whole island of Mindanao primarily to ensure total eradic eradication of Daesh-inspired Dawatul Ismaia Waliyatul Masrik, other like-minded local foreign terrorist groups and armed lawless violent groups and communist terrorists and their cuddlers, supporters and financiers. We're hopeful that Congress would see the need for further extension of martial law, as explained in PRRD's official communication, to finally put an end to the ongoing rebellion in Mindanao. Public safety, after all, is our primordial concern. We must unite against these evil forces. So you have a copy of the letter, um, which I believe had already been received by Congress this afternoon. Now, um, just to set the record straight because there are ongoing fake news that I personally oppose Secretary Obial because she opposed the dengue vaccine. I have with me the um, video of my testimony in the Commission on Appointments. I oppose the nomination of uh, Secretary Obial because of her flip-flop on at least two issues. On the Zika virus, she started by saying we didn't have it, admitted we had it. She said it was not endemic and then information came out that as early as uh, the 1930s, we knew that Zika was um, endemic in the Philippines, which affected the proposed response, which then was a 500 million budget for the Bureau of Quarantine, which I believe went to waste because Zika being endemic, the solution is still to have cleaner neighborhoods. <laughs> on the issue of dengue, she flip-flopped flip twice on this issue. She started out by attempting to stop it, then she implemented, she attempted to stop it, then she implemented. I have actually um, the videos of Secretary Obial saying it was safe and the video of my um, opposition to her in the, Court of Appe in the Commission on Appointments. I said clearly that my basis for opposition was her flip-flops. We expected or we have a right to expect from the Department of Health that she will tell the people if dengue vaccine was safe or unsafe, but she can't say both depending on who is asking. Fake news circulating is that I oppose Obial because I wanted the dengue vaccine implemented, which is wrong because the truth of the matter was, number one, I was in opposition to influence, and number two, I did not like that she did not know that whether or not the dengue vaccine was safe or unsafe, just for the record, because I've seen for myself fake news on the internet. So um, are there further questions? MPC question, uh, Joseph Morong, microphone. Um, Hannah, please, thank you. Sir, in the letter of the President to Congress, he outlined uh, some of the reasons. No? Uh, I think there are probably at least three or four groups, uh, terrorist groups plus the CPP and PA, but outside, excluding CPP uh, and PA. Um, was the martial law effective in combating the first four groups of terrorist groups, like the Daesh-inspired group and then... I think the martial law was largely responsible for the fact that we liberated the uh, city of Marawi. Having said that, the information on the ground is that at least five groups continue to operate, and although there's been cessation of shootings in Marawi, the president has always said that the recruitment of Maute continues and that they expect fighting again in some other area. No? And that is why he has requested for extension of martial law. Again. The groups mentioned by the president for basis for extending martial law is because the following groups are still um, on the act of committing acts of rebellion, Hapilon Maute Group, Turaife Group, Bangsamoro, Islamic Freedom Fighters, Remnants of Abu Sayyaf, and Daesh-inspired DIWM and other local terrorist groups, including, of course, the New People's Army, which is waging a rebellion which, according to the Guinness Book of World Records, is the longest ever in his human history. Sir, isn't the President considering that problem, just the security law enforcement problem, such that we really don't need martial law for it? Well, actually, this was a recommendation of the uh, administrator of um, martial law, uh, General Lorenzana, and we have no basis to question the factual finding of the troops on the ground and our commanders on the ground. Sir, just one last point on the NPA. 
this is something new, no? He's including the NPA in that grouping. Now, um, is the president going to use martial law against the NPA just for a categorical answer? Well, for as long as there are acts of rebellion being committed in the island province of Mindanao, yes, he will use the full force of martial law against the NPA as well. In an operational sense, how is he going to run after the NPA using martial law? Well, uh, it is an ongoing armed conflict, and I think we know how an ongoing uh, armed conflict is um, affected. No? Unfortunately, there will be fighting between government forces and the New People's Army. But, Alimbawa, sir, if, um, let's put our perspective as a member of the NPA. Should you be worried more because you have the martial law now? And why? I do not know because um, I'm not in a position to speak for the NPA. Yeah, okay. Perhaps we should ask their spokesperson. Okay, but they have to commit crimes before you could use the martial law against them. Well, um, the act of rebellion is a continuing crime. So for as long as they don't, have, they don't lay down their grounds, they are committing a criminal act. Would you have like an arrest order like they did in Marawi? Of course. That goes without saying no? that the uh, martial law administrator is empowered to order the arrest of individuals. And because the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus is also suspended, then they would have to await the lifting of martial law for judicial remedy. Okay. Huh? Context of, NPA. of course, okay. because they were included in the groups engaged in the crime of rebellion, which is the basis for the extension of martial law. Right, sir. Thank okay. you. Uh, Pia? Sir, just on the terms, uh, the president said that the martial law extension request is primarily to ensure total eradication of the Daesh-inspired groups and the other groups. Uh, sir, how does the president define total eradication? Well, we need to ensure that they no longer present a threat that all acts of rebellion emanating from them had ceased. So, and so that they are not in a position to endanger public security. So, sir, incapacitated. It's not that all of the members have to be neutralized, killed. It's well, I think that's governed, already, that's governed already by um, international humanitarian law. The military objective is a complete subjugation of the enemy, so much so that they cease to commit the act of rebellion or terrorism. Mm -hmm. uh, and sir, how about the, the inclusion of the NPA? Because we also know that the NPA are present not only in Mindanao, but in other parts of the country. Um, can we expect the president to, based on his ra reasoning in the, in the letter, expand eventually the coverage of martial law to the whole of the country, given that the NPA are present in other parts? Well, I would not speculate, but he could have, but he did not. So he only asked for extension of for martial law in the island province of Mindanao. Uh, and sir, lastly, um, he also mentioned that he would, uh, he wants to target the financiers of the communist terrorist, communist terrorists. So can we expect, sir, that mining companies who've been paying the revolutionary tax will be also the subject of arrest orders given the previous pronouncements of the president? There is a special law against um, financing of terrorist organizations. That is one effect of the declaration and proclamation that the NPA is a terrorist group, although the petition pursuant to the UN's Human Security Act still has to be filed in the Regional Trial Court of Manila, but individuals who will contribute financial resources may be investigated and prosecuted for funding terrorist organizations. But would it be just to include the mining companies given that they're, they say they're forced to pay this, this tax? Let them invoke that as legal defense. Okay, thank you, P. Uh, Raymond Tinasa on martial law. Uh, good afternoon. Sir, given na uh, malapit na mag yung session ng Congress, so are you still confident na this request of the President will be ultimately granted before the, the previous extension would uh, expire? I uh, believe so, because um, there's talk that um, Congress will either convene in joint session either on Wednesday or Thursday. So if it's Thursday, then they will have to have a special session. So lastly, so aside from those previous terrorists in the arrest order from the Department of National Defense, so do you expect that the list would be expanded, including now the NPA uh, members? That's to be decided by the martial law administrator, and I will inform you if he does. Thank you, sir. In fact, do so. Still on martial law, Rose Novenario. Hi. Sir, good afternoon. Yes, sir, nung unang-unang pagdeklara ng martial law ni Presidente, sabi po niya pinupondohan ng illegal drugs yung terrorism sa Mindanao. At actually kasama dun sa may arrest order yung ilang narco-politicians. Bakit po ngayon hindi niya nabanggit yun as reason for the extension of martial law? 
Well, he doesn't need to because this is just an extension. The ground basically is there's still acts of rebellion being committed. But I'm sure that these groups are able to conduct the crime of rebellion for as long as they have because of drug financing precisely. So included po yung, may include pa rin po yung narco-politicians o yung arrest order po ng previous uh, declaration of martial law is in effect pa rin po? That will still be in effect because it hasn't been lifted. Okay, thank you. Okay, still on martial law? Uh, David, to be followed. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque there speaking before reporters in Malacanang giving an update on... Uh, based on the letter or the explanation of the SND and AFP chief kung bakit po one year, ano yung mga parameters na kinonsider kung bakit ganito katagal ang magiging, as inihiling na extension. Well, I think they want a final um, period no, to deal with these acts of rebellion. But then again, you know, even before... We gave ourselves a timeline on when to um, liberate Marawi, and we failed to um, actually meet those deadlines. No? So let's just give them the leeway. No? Because after all, as soon as it is um, extended, it can be cut short if there's no need for it. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, Philip. Sir, good afternoon. Once again, that is uh, presidential spokesperson Harry Roque answering questions uh, from reporters in Malacanang about... Uh, is a legal basis or no legal basis? And... The results of the review came out September 7 this year, and it showed that um, it's not illegal. Nothing happened. The procurement, the FEC exemption were all within the bounds of law and within the bounds of policy. That's why I'm saying to people, um, I think there's a lot of uh, policies and laws that need to be put in place so that this does not happen again. We can see a lot of loopholes in the way we do things in the Department of Health that created this particular problem. So I'm saying it's not illegal, but it's unethical, Your Honor. Se Secretary, earlier uh, Secretary Green made mention of foreign experts, no? I think when she uh, went to uh, Geneva. Uh, did that come out in your investigation? At sino sino itong mga foreign experts? Because clearly it didn't come from the locals. No. No? Uh, there must be some form of uh, consultation and uh, 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 advice. No? So, so sa anong basis niya? And did that come out in your investigation? No, it did not come out, uh, Your Honor, because there was no document to that effect that that particular consultation was made. So, what, again, what? was her basis. And uh, we can ask Secretary Garin. Yeah. But your in Honor, your investigation, did there they... There was no document. Your so, Honor. wala? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair? Well, just one st statement. It's obvious to me, I don't know with the others, that there was a rush on you, on you, Hayes, talaga, ang ginawa dito on a, on a vaccine that has not been proven totally effective, no? Uh, unless you... Unless you're just talking about those who had dengue already, and even that is iffy. So let that be a lesson to us here, and uh, I will ask a question later on concerning this after after uh, Senator Ayersito uh, asks his question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just like to ask, um, Dr. Giorgio Lechones, since you're already here, not since PCMC was the agency that made the procurement of the vaccine, tinig na ko lang hu itong timeline, no? I just want you to confirm, January 21, Philippine Children's Medical Center made a purchase order for dengue vaccine to Zwilig Pharma, the sole distributor of dengue vaccine in the Philippines, without approval from the former Executive Council. Meron ba hong approval yan? Wala pa po dahil hindi ko kailangan yung... Ang kailangan ko po, I'm emphasizing, is the certificate of exemption that is so issued may, by the Secretary of Health and not by the FEC. So on the basis of that, nag-issue na kayo ng, pur ng uh, purchase order? To, to January start... January 21? Yes, yeah, that's ko correct. And then, January 23, 2016, publication for bidding already. So, the no yung note lang doon, yung MOA between the DOH and PCMC was finalized and notarized on February 19, 2016. That's so correct, parang... Pa. Can you confirm na nangyari po ito lahat? That, that's correct po, sir. The dates are correct that you have mentioned. 
is the government allowed to make a purchase order um, to the, the supplier ahead of public yes, bidding? The, the bidding process from as a beginning and end, it's, it's dynamic. And, and we, we allow it to proceed to a certain to a certain level because we can always declare a failure of bidding or not to proceed using the reservation clause. Uh, I forgot the section. But within two days, the, lang, no? uh, confirm to two days apart. Which one possess? Yung in yung uh, purchase order and at the same time yung bid, yung uh, publication. Within two yes, days. Sir. It's within two days because it's, yeah. 21 and 23. So when did Sanofi, the, one, more, one more, Mr. Chair. When did Sanofi submit its bidding documents? Was there, or was there any other bidder aside from Sanofi? Well, is it's there any other Zwilig bidder? It's Zwilig, sir. Zwilig, the I mean, uh, Zwilig, okay. There's no other, um, the one who submitted or responded to the advertisement is only Swilig. Your Honor. Okay, that's all, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, siguro, Secretary Duque, ready na ho yung data kung ilan pa yung vaccine na natitira? I, I, uh, Your Honor, I think the uh, information will have to come from uh, PCMC or uh, 